the International Space Station will celebrate its 20th anniversary this November the 20th, marking two decades of amazing microgravity research and technological revelations. In honor of that, I thought I'd go through a list of the five most interesting, in my opinion, facts about this pressurized tin can hurtling over our horizon every 90 minutes. First, allow me to explain what the station itself is. The International Space Station is a habitable artificial satellite, the first component of which was launched into orbit in 1998. It is approximately 239 feet long and 356 feet wide. It's composed of numerous different modules and powered by massive solar arrays, and has three to six people living on it at any given time. It maintains an orbit with an altitude of around 400 kilometers and completes 15 and a half orbits every single day. It is the ninth space station ever to be inhabited by crews, following the Russian Salyut, Almaz, and Mir stations, as well as the Skylab from the US. It is serviced by numerous spacecraft from Russian Soyuz capsules to SpaceX Dragon capsules, as well as formerly the American Space Shuttle program. The station's primary purpose is to conduct research in microgravity, ranging from agriculture, medicine, physics, and more. It's particularly useful in figuring things out when it comes to future manned spaceflights. Lastly, the station isn't just a NASA venture. The ISS program is a joint project among NASA, Roscosmos, that's the Russian space agency, JAXA, the Japanese space agency, ESA, the European space agency, and CSA, the Canadian space agency. And all of these agencies share the Russian and United States orbital segments that the station is divided into. So, fact number one. The astronauts aboard the ISS are not in zero gravity. This is a very common misconception, since the astronauts do appear to be weightless while they're aboard the station. However, it isn't due to a lack of gravity. The station's only 400 kilometers above the ground. There's a massive amount of gravity from the Earth acting upon it. What the station does is essentially an eternal parabolic arc. There's an easy way to demonstrate this, and it's called the Vomit Comet. The Vomit Comet is a nickname given to aircraft that are used to provide brief periods of near weightlessness by performing a parabolic flight. In the simplest terms possible, it flies almost straight up and then almost straight back down, and in the process, provides about 30 to 40 seconds of weightlessness. This is a great opportunity for me to throw in that footage of the late Stephen Hawking and the thrill in his eyes as he got to experience weightlessness despite his disability. This is what the ISS is doing all the time. It's falling over the edge of the Earth, but never hitting the ground. Thus, what we get is the appearance of zero gravity, near weightlessness for everyone on board. Fact number two. The station is a collection of parts. Of course, I doubt anyone believed that the entire station had been launched into space, but let's explain exactly how she was built. The ISS is a third generation modular station. The first few were fixed pieces that couldn't be altered or added to once launched, and this modular concept allowed for the stations to be added to and modified throughout their lives as the goals and research performed gradually changed. On November 20th, 1998, the Zarya module was launched on a Russian proton rocket. Two weeks later, the STS-80 shuttle mission brought the Unity module and connected it to Zarya, giving us this. This two-module core remained empty for a year and a half until Russia, in July of 2000, launched the Zvezda module, allowing a crew of two astronauts or cosmonauts to live on the station. The Destiny laboratory was added next, and then for a little while, things looked kind of uncertain for the future of the ISS. After the 2003 disaster of the space shuttle Columbia, which disintegrated during re-entry, the shuttle program was temporarily suspended. Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. Columbia Houston, UHF comm check. 
During this time, the station was serviced exclusively by Russian Soyuz capsules, much like it is today. In March 2006, after the shuttle program resumed, a plan was proposed to complete the ISS's construction by 2010. Now, the ISS contains 16 separate modules, with plans to add a new Russian module sometime soon. Fact number three, stuff hits the ISS all the time. A lot of conspiracy theorists like to complain that the station has some kind of golden maintenance record, miraculously avoiding being hit by the incredibly fast-paced debris out there. However, this is simply not the case. The station has been damaged numerous times, usually by micrometeoroids. Here's a few notable incidents. There's a module on the station called the Cupola Module, built by ESA. It's essentially an observatory, designed in a suspiciously similar style to the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. In 2012, a piece of debris struck one of the windows of the Cupola Module, causing a circular chip 7mm in diameter. Thankfully, the windows are quadruple glazed, and no depressurization occurred. In 2013, astronaut Chris Hadfield snapped a photo of a hole punched into a solar array by a tiny rock. The station gets hit pretty frequently, despite being monitored by DARPA and having panels to shield more sensitive components. A NASA administrator once described a solar array as resembling a bullet-ridden Texas road sign. Fact number four. The ISS has farms. That's right, plants are being grown on the station as part of its research. One of the big obstacles to future manned missions deeper and deeper into space is self-sufficiency. If we're going to start a colony on Mars, we'll need to grow our own food. We can't be waiting on shipments from Earth that take three months to travel 200 million kilometers. So to practice the difficulties of growing food away from the Earth, plants are grown in the ISS like lettuce, peas, and radishes. They've learned a lot. For instance, plants were found to grow faster when overwatered by Earth standards, suggesting that the extra fertilizer being used was altering how the plants grew. Mature plants are harvested and packaged up in a freezer for return to Earth, where they are then investigated by more scientists on the ground. Fact number five. The most interesting thing I know about the ISS is that you can see it for yourself. This really sticks in the craw of conspiracy theorists who do some serious mental gymnastics in order to explain this phenomenon away. Not only can it be spotted by the naked eye as a bright spot moving across the night sky, a basic telescope or a good camera make this way more spectacular. It requires some careful preparation and timing to catch a really good look at the ISS, but once you get it, it's really spectacular. The best way that I know is to observe a transit, that is, the ISS passing in front of something else, like the moon or the sun. When done right, you can see the specific shape of the solar panels and truss modules, and some photographers are able to resolve details like approaching cargo craft or shuttles. Let's take a look at a few. Oh, that was beautiful. Four, three, two, one, transit. Oh, it happened, I saw it. I totally saw it. Dude. So there you have it. For 20 years, the ISS has been streaking over our heads, performing scientific feats that we can't even imagine. There's a phrase that exists, a kind of mental phenomenon that happens to astronauts who are aboard the station. When they look down at the Earth, they experience what's known as the overview effect, a cognitive shift in awareness about how tiny and fragile our ball of life is, our pale blue dot suspended on a mote of dust in a sunbeam. From space, National boundaries vanish, conflicts become meaningless, and a need to protect this planet becomes paramount. This is all we've got for now. 
Thank you guys very much for watching. If you like this video, like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel, which is Dead Kennedy in Space. Thank you, and I'm out. Over the next hill, beyond the horizon. Find your place in space. Space is vast and unexplored. There's a lot of work to do.